That's why the Bible says, lay not up treasure here on earth where moth can eat it and thieves can break into it. He said, lay up your treasures in heaven because if your treasure is in heaven, your heart will also be in heaven because where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. There are many believers, although they name the name of the Lord, their biggest reward and their appetite, their affection is this world. That is where their treasure is. The reason why they don't have eternal contemplation, the reason why eternity is not a constant meditation in their heart, is because they don't lay up any treasure in heaven. All your money, your cars, your land, your houses, your clothes, your children, everything you have amassed in this world, none of it can follow you to the great beyond. When the throne and the horn is blown and your soul is summoned to report for judgment, nothing in this mundane world can follow you. And this is why I'm bringing this teaching. Unfortunately, a bulk of our efforts and our energy is spent trying to pursue these things that cannot follow us to eternity. So the moment a man draws his last breath, the totality of his relevance is swallowed up inside time because all his achievement is within time. Time locks up his identity. He appears in eternity naked like a man who has never lived because all his achievement was in the earth and none of it can journey with him to the great beyond. There is only a few things that can follow you to eternity. Number one is the souls that you want. The scripture says those who win souls are wise. He says they will shine like the firmament of heaven. He says the souls that you win, they are like stars upon your crown. So it means that anybody who deliberately wins souls during his lifetime, the souls you win, they are possessions and inheritance and treasures that you have laid up for yourself in eternity. I was talking to God's servant this morning. I was asking him, how long do we have here on earth? What is the average life expectancy of a West African or a South African or an East African? Do you know that you don't even have a long time here? This life you are living is like a reality TV show. The show will soon end. The real eternal existence, it will happen after this one. And so, where you will spend eternity is dictated by how you lived this one. And this one is just a handful of bread. And we live for vanity, live for lust, live chasing after the wind. Things that will not have any, any eternal value in our life. This is how many people draw their last breath. Maybe you go to the grave in Zambia. Go and look at the grave. That's as many people that have appeared in questionable eternity. Many of them don't even know that all they have labored for is vanity. Lost forever. See, if you don't remember now your creator in the days of your youth, the evil day comes when you will wish that you gave God your all. That is when you will now realize that all the things that kept you awake, all the stress, all the pressure, all the worry, they were never the emphasis let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. This is what life was all about. It's about fearing God and serve his purpose in your generation. See how the Bible summarizes the end of David's life. When he had served the purpose of God in his generation. Is that how you are living? Or spirits demonic elements are pressuring you every day. Some people before this year even started, their vow is that I must make it. I, 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 I can never be poor by the end of this year. Now, that thing you are doing there, if you are not careful and you die in the process of pursuit of mammon, your soul will be lost forever. Now, it will be unbearable for those of us 
who at least have some knowledge of God. Because you already know some things about God, but you did not go all out. The level of mockery demons will mock you. They know that you name the name of the Lord, but you did not depart from iniquity. They know. See, the reason why you hear me bringing this kind of message to your land is because I have not come to impress any of you. My aim is that everybody will have spiritual authenticity. Not something that you are not sure whether you are in the kingdom or not. You will know that your number one obsession is Jesus. So he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. Marriage will be added. Wealth will be added. Long life will be added. We were never designed to look for these things. We were designed to look for God. It is in finding God that all these things follow. Now, look at how brief your life is. How long do you have to go and chase money? After chasing money, then you now chase marital establishment. After marital, because this is how the world wants to live. Have you heard people that say, if they have not made money, they will not marry? Look at me. Live your life with eternity in view. Let me tell you why. It is only with that eternal consciousness that you will be able to put things in their order. Put things in their priority. If you don't have that eternal consciousness, you will magnify things that are mundane. And you will major on minor things. He says... Teach us to number our days so that we may incline our heart unto wisdom. If you know that I will not be here forever, if you know that I have just a handful of days on earth, you would give your whole time to advancing God's will and God's purpose in your generation so that any day he calls you home, any day you die, it's only men that will cry. But you, you know that I have served God with my life. Have you read the scripture? Precious in the sight of the Lord at the death of his saints. This is why when saints die, it's a joyful thing. Because their life was not a waste. They did not live chasing vanities. See, what I'm trying to do this night, I am trying to give some people some dose is like a syringe there is vanity too much lust too much chasing after the wind too much worldliness carry the average christian keep him carry the average worldly person keep him what are their pursuits the same thing the desire of the average spiritual person versus the worldly person all of them are looking for the same thing no difference in fact many of you sitting here you are just using god you are using him. The reason why you are coming to God is because of what you want to get from him. You don't love him. You absolutely have no love for him. You are using him. God is like an ATM. An ATM machine. You are, you are just coming because you want to withdraw. Why are you praying the way you are praying? That time they were singing worship. Why did you need that now? You were crying. The way you love a damn self, as a woman, the way you love your husband, the way you love a lady as a guy, that you, you are planning from morning. You have been planning since morning about how to visit her in the evening. Is that how you think about God? Is that how, when you remember church time, in the morning you cannot wait for service because it's a time for you to go and meet your beloved. You don't love him. It's, it's transactional. You came because you know if you do this, this, he too can do this, this for you. Now, you cannot touch anything real that way. Because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered into the hearts of men the things God has reserved for those who love him. Do you love the Lord? Do you love him?
You are giving your heart to human beings. Human beings that cannot be trusted. Human beings that God has been warning you about. He says the heart of man is desperately wicked. But you, you love man. You can't love the creator, the giver of your life. You see, when I see the way people pretend about spiritual things, I know very quickly that it will not hold weight after a while. I know that it's just a matter of time. The hypocrisy will fade away. And it will be those who love God that will have some strength based on the economy of that love to overcome the temptations Satan will bring their way. We are advancing into the end times. And in these end times, Satan is deploying all of his arsenals to make sure he occasions compromise in the life of people and the love of many will work school. Many people will become offended in the brethren. Many people that name the name of the Lord, they will put their hands into iniquity. Tonight, my first question to you is, do you love the Lord? Are you obsessed about his agenda? Are you deliberately pursuing after his will? Like David, hear what these men were saying. He says, as the deer pants for water, so my soul longest after you. The way David was relating with God is like a man who relate to a damsel. He loved God genuinely. If you don't love the Lord, the Bible says you are anathema maranatha. You know what it means? It says if you don't love God, you are anathema maranatha. It means you have been weighed and reserved for judgment. It means you can be walking around like you are alive, but you are already dead. Do you know what has happened to us? We are a generation of dead men and women who are refusing to subscribe to life. And we are carrying death around, moving as dead men, coming to fraternize with life as though we have actually had that access to his life but we just come to associate and go back still in debt. This is why from January till December, the sinner is still a sinner. The fornicator is still a fornicator. The adulterer is still an adulterer. Because no transformation. We are just using God. What shall it profit a man if he gains the world and he lost his soul. My joy will be when I leave Zambia and after many years when our stories are all closed and we meet in the great beyond it is my hope that you are rapturable. It is my hope that the master can look at you and say well done thou good and faithful servant. It is my hope that it is not just the accolade of men. Men are clapping for you, but spirits are looking at you as an abomination. Men are hailing you. Men are celebrating you. But you are reserved for judgment. How long, how long should we continue in iniquity that grace will abound? How long? How long should we continue to remain infantile? That holiness cannot be captured in our nature. The true test of maturity in the spirit is obedience. Jesus says, how do you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I ask you to do? How are you calling me your Lord, but you cannot obey me naturally? That your life does not naturally gravitate towards God. Holiness is not an emphasis. Meanwhile, the ancients, the patriarchs, they lived in this world as pilgrims. Do you know how pilgrims live? Pilgrims live. Amen. They lived like nomads. They lived in tents. 
they were ever ready to move because they were waiting for the next instruction from God. The next thing he says, move, they move. But we, we have become landlords here on earth. Our heart is in this world. That is why we cannot put our attention to eternal things. Today, you are going to use one minute and tell the Lord, search my heart. Check if there is anything I have placed above you. Check if there is anything I have loved more than you. Some of you, you have loved riches. You have loved fame. You have loved family. Some of you have loved the accolade of men. Some of you is ambition. You have loved it. But after your days on earth is numbered, the only thing you'll be remembered for is the things you did for the Lord. Not any of these things that constitute a distraction on the part of spiritual progress. I want you to x-ray your heart in one minute and tell the Lord, anything that has exalted itself in my heart above your knowledge, above you, Lord, dethrone it until you are the only obsession in my life. Until only you stand chiefest among all my desire. a ladder for spirits. Is your voice a ladder, a vehicle for spirits? Or you are just an entertainer? Or you just make melodies? Are you a vehicle for spirits? Let me not sing another song if you will not join me into time through me. Let no song leave my vocal cord if you will not come down through me like a ladder until I become a conduit until I become a router for divine realities let my lips be seen oh man of God preach out the gospel 